The following is a world class bullshit is exclusive. Welcome to World Class Bullshitters, the epitome of pop culture. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is the one, the only, Dion Green. Baby, baby, boys and girls, welcome back. Here we are yet again, giving you what you need, what you desire, and God damn it, do I love to give it to you raw. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, this is a rapey start. <laughs> I am about to say, I was like, um, uh. Well, that man hemming and hauling in the background is the last standing Samoa <laughs> Nick Utam. Um, I will I will give it to you consensually, and if you're of age. <laughs> I'm just saying. Finally, I'm just saying. And finally, Kendo Slice. I'll give it to you, Kendo Udria, Kendo Machka. So you're going to give it to one attractive blonde? Am uh, I, I going to need a shot for that? Well, I'm not going to loosely translate it for you. It mostly just meant Kendo hit, Kendo crush, so that's how I'm going to do it to you. I'm going to hit you and crush you. Crush that pussy. That's right. PC, pussy crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just have that shirt now? Because that's amazing. Oh, that is, right that is good shit right there. South Park might sue us for that one. Really? Okay, never mind. Oh, it's from, never mind. I, then I just wrote the words PC pussy, so that's all that'll be from that idea. Oh, we <laughs> might be able to get away with it, though. And I scratch it. it out immediately. Never mind. Yeah. I don't think they could really copyright that just because it was in one of their episodes. They can't, because I've been selling the Pecan Sandy shirts for like a year and a half, <laughs> and I've gotten copyright strikes from Fox for other shit, but not the Pecan Sandies, because you can't copyright a fucking cookie. So, Unless you're Keebler. Yeah, <laughs> they're not, and neither are we. That's right. So, so guys, I have some good news. We're only one week away from the release of Avengers Infinity War, and in preparation well, for that, we're going to take a look back at the MCU, as well as give you our rankings for each of the films. But before we get into that... Quick shout-out to our listener of the week, Anton Lenov. Thank you for your support, Anton, and World Class Bullshitters would not be the same without you. Also, a very special shout-out to our meme winner of the week, Mark Rinsler, for his Kathleen Kennedy meme. Basically, he took a picture of Watto and put Kathleen Kennedy's head on it, and uh, it's pretty goddamn funny. So, if you want to win the meme of the week, all you got to do is go to our Facebook group and make us laugh. According to George Lucas, she is a slaver. <laughs> and she's white. Yeah. So now it's time to mention our patrons, because this week our Patreon has grown quite a bit. So a very special shout-out and thank you to Jack Roven, Melon, Christopher Pressa, Alexander Farmer, Anton Lenove, I almost said Brian Lape again, but you know what, Brian Lape, because he's awesome, <laughs> Stefan, Derek Milgivray. What Was Stefan like the alter ego of Urkel? Yeah, Stefan Urkel <laughs> yep, helps yep. support world-class bullshitters. Cool. Now, Stefan, if you could hook us up with your time machine so we can go see all these movies early and have the fastest reviews of anyone else, we'd really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks buddy. And we'd like to meet fucking Carl Winslow, too. Yeah. I am now, goddammit, now. <laughs> so, those are our new patrons this week. Thank you to everyone who joined. And real quick, let's talk about what's new on Patreon. So, last night we recorded and released a Patreon commentary for Super Troopers. And uh, it's one of Kendo's finest moments here on the channel, because, Kendo, you know that movie better than anyone else I've ever met. Yeah, well, I have had many fine moments. Yeah, well, that was your best one. Also, hey. we got our Lethal Weapon commentary up there, which was uh, apparently like a goddamn legendary episode. I was drunk, so I don't remember it. And then we also have all the Star Wars commentaries, as well as the James Bond commentaries, exclusive stuff. And we also have a show, an extra podcast, called World Class Bullshitters After Hours, where each week after the podcast, we go into more uh, in-depth discussions on all kinds of stuff. So this week, we're going to talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe shows on Netflix. We're not going to talk about those on this week's episode. So if you want to hear that, it's only on Patreon. For a buck. Yeah, for a buck. A buck a month gets you access to everything. Five bucks a month, with a month, not a munch, because, I mean, whatever, fuck it, we're not food. But if you do that, it's only 17 cents a day, and uh, you get access to all kinds of shit as well as gifts. So check it out if you can afford it. Awesome. If you can't, that's fine. Just tell everyone about World Class Bullshitters. You're helping us grow. And now, before we get into our episode, a word from our sponsor, world-renowned author Aaron Clary. If you're tuning into World Class Bullshitters, there's a pretty good chance that you're a geek. And if you're a geek, there's a pretty good chance you're smarter than the average bear. Intelligence is an advantage in today's world, but there are drawbacks too. Drawbacks that often go unrecognized and unremarked. 
Thinking you were dumb because you fall asleep in class, underestimating your potential because nobody told you, failing to find people who intellectually stimulate you, to wondering just how in the hell can anyone cry about their team losing in a baseball game. There's a lot of disadvantages to being smart, but if you don't know what they are, they can bite you in the ass later in life and prevent you from achieving your best. So learn about them now by reading Curse of the High IQ. While the rest of the world fawns over normies and conformies, celebrity Hollywood gossip, or whether the Packers beat the Dodgers, intelligent people face a world that by statistical necessity is not made for them. Make sure to make this world yours by reading The Curse of the High IQ. Available in paperback, Kindle, and audio on Amazon.com. Alright, and that book will be found in the description below, so just follow the link and check it out. Uh, if you are a nerd, you may be weird, but you don't have to be. You can be smart and cool. Just like us. Yeah. Anyway, though, it's time for the news, because next week it's irrelevant. So, Nick, tell us about the news you found. Let's see. The news I found. Um, the first thing is uh, the new mask for, uh, what is it, uh, Halloween has come out. And they did, they did a test screening of it, and they called it Halloween H40 or H40. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a little weird, but uh, so far things have become uh like when when they did the test screening it was a really positive result so they're really looking forward to it and the new mask came out and it looks fucking amazing yeah for me the guy who always bitches about like all the merchandise if it doesn't look just like the shatner mask i'm impressed with this one. Oh yeah 100 percent, man like it's gonna be fucking awesome um or at least i hope so because um it's masks cool shit it <sighs> It looks old, which kind of just is like, eh, but it doesn't look like Rob Zombie old, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, remember, this takes place 40 years after the originals, and it's supposed to be the same mask. Yeah, it so. says uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Returns Home exactly, well, okay, sorry, uh, the movie comes out October 19th, 2018 of this year. Well, you know where you'll be around that time. Uh, yes, I do. I know exactly where the fuck I'll be. Cleveland, Here's Ohio. Inside. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go watch the fucking Bengals play the Browns. No, all the bullshitters are gonna be together for my birthday, so maybe we take a detour before we go get drunk at my birthday. Let me we'll, set listen. the Cuyahoga on fire. <laughs> I live in Cincinnati, not Cleveland, dude. I'm sorry to break it to you. Our river doesn't catch fire. It's dirty, but it's never caught fire. That's a shame. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm. I am looking forward to the this movie a little bit, but once again, like it's it's kind of a weird remake, and I just hope it's good. That's all I do. I just hope it's good. Yeah, me too. I mean, but it can't be worse than the Rob Zombie one, so we're there. Yeah, we, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about those uh, at, at at fucking nauseam. Uh, uh, the first year we did um, Schlocktoberfest. So if you want to hear us talk about it, I think did didn't we did we do a commentary for them or not? No, we just talked okay, about yeah, it. We did, so, a, we did a like an hour episode on why Rob Zombie sucks. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to hear his fun. bash him and you know that man in his you know in his film career, he should just go back and make shitty music videos for his Walmart metal. Um, <laughs> and 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 be happy fucking a, a stick that's his wife with two giant, you know, fucking water balloons. Um <laughs> Yeah, They're I know. Not that big. Tell us how you really feel, Nick. Well, <laughs> I hate feel. the man. Like I hate him as much as uh, Dion hates um... <laughs> Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder, yeah. <laughs> like I will beat him to the white meat shows because he's just a bitch. Oh, <laughs> this is a man. This is, this, is, this is a man who complained. Who who's supposed to be like hardcore and shit. Like he complained about kids skateboarding outside of his house. Okay, he's just like you shouldn't do that, and like uh, it's like this, like he's such a fucking poser. There's a picture of him with a tiny dog, like holding a fucking water bottle. It's like, dude, you're you're a fucking poser. Get the fuck out. I like one song by Rob Zombie, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's not yeah. even it. But yeah, sure, we'll go with much. Dragula. Yeah. And Rob Zombie song. I like Thunder Kiss '65. I think that's a good song, but. That's white zombie, so I'm sure there's other people that are responsible for it being kind of decent. Anyway, what else you got, Nick? Uh, this one's kind of terrifying. Cops in cops in Wales caught a drug dealer by IDing his fingerprint from a WhatsApp photo. So police in Wales managed to arrest and convict a drug dealer by identifying his fingerprint from a photo posted on WhatsApp, a technique that local law enforcement is calling groundbreaking. The South Wales Police Department got its hands on a photo which depicted the hand of a man holding ecstasy tabs in his palm. After searching the phone 
after searching the phone for a person person arrested in town of uh, Bridgend, police identified the fingerprints from the photograph, then matched it to an alleged dealer. In total, 11 convictions were made in association with the case. So we live in the Twilight Zone now. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying. Um... That worries the fuck out of me. Like, I feel like I need to do the thing that uh, Will Smith did in Men in Black and burn my fingerprints off, or <laughs> or, or maybe chew them off, like that one movie. Um, uh, Ace, what is it? Uh, Smoking Aces or whatever. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, that 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 is like once again. Like, I I read I read a, I read the technology blog like every like every day, and like more and more, it just worries the fuck out of me. I just want to live in a fucking shed outside not deal with the world age of hd baby gotta be careful what you put online yeah no shit man gosh can we get hd copies of the wild wild west we should watch this wild wild west now that is a different crime altogether but god damn it i'll risk it all again (laughs) i remember the one of the first times i ever drank with you like hardcore like i'm gonna put on wild wild west and i just passed out instantly (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which, which is more of a testament to Wild Wild West and not my drinking habits, but yeah. which is hilarious all the same. It's like when my mom used to get afraid, she would just go to bed and be like, oh, the thing that's bothering me will go away when I wake <laughs> up, which is terrible advice. So whenever Wild Wild West comes on, I just drink to avoid it. It's like Everclear and I'm done. <laughs> Big Will, Drew Hill, done done it again, y'all. It's done, I am actually oh, dancing right now. Fuck, I'm going to do it. I like every time. Like, what are we talking about? And I laugh every time. Done, done it again, y'all. Done, done it again. And every time. Your delivery of that is perfect. Well, One, there's also there's also fucking Miami as well that we always talk about, too. Yep. Miami. Joel loves that song. Of course he does. He's old enough to love it. He was, you know, back when he was in his 20s. <laughs> in his 20s, he was in the club still. Like He was in his 20s when that song came out. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> He was, he was, he was, he, he was, he was in the club, like trying to get all those, all those black bitches, <laughs> all the, all the black women. Like, yeah, I'm white. No, nah, he was, he was in, he, he was in Japan trying to get, you know, anything he could. Oh my god. Well, when the yen, when the yens count up, you can get you some real pussy in Japan. How, how, how many yen? How many yen is that? Like twenty thousand yen? Like how many yen? I'd say twenty thousand sounds about right. Twenty, <laughs> sixteen thousand yen, which is like eight bucks. Uh, I have no idea how much yen is worth to American dollars. Not a lot. I I'm just oh, it's like ten times less or something. Like that. Oh, jeez. Hang on, I'm on it. Talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. Joel just seems like the type of guy that went to the uh, vending machine to buy panties, oh picked up like God. a manga, and then just went home for the night. Oh, like, oh yeah, my! Oh my God! Effort. One U.S. dollar is 107.66 Japanese yen. Oh, okay. So we're way off then. <laughs> So if you get the five dollar make you holla, that's five hundred thirty eight yen. So that's why video games like fifty eight hundred yen. Okay, makes sense now. <clears throat> yeah, that make that totally makes sense now. So you got any more news, Nick, or should we take it over to Kendo? Oh, uh, I'm done, man. That's it. That's all I got this week. Nothing really. All happened. right, Kendo. So <clears throat> there has been a slew of celebrity deaths lately. Yeah. And. I know you have a Deadpool roster that you play in your personal life. I do. But let's tell the listeners about some of the celebrity deaths that have happened just since last week's episode. Yeah, there's been five really big names gone down in just like one week. Uh, The first one was Mitzi Shore, who gave us Pauly. She ran ran that comedy club and everything out west. Uh, Then um, Arlie Ermey goes down, and he's a relatively famous dude. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. He's given great... You know, he's the one. Of the, he's the only person, or like, he's either first or the first and only person to ever ad lib in a Stanley Kubrick movie. Because I've read about that, where he just kind of went in and was Kubrick's like, "Here's what you're gonna do," and he just was like, "Fuck that! I'm an I've been an actual drill sergeant. You're not gonna tell me how to act." And he pretty much did his. That's how he did his audition. He just went in there screaming and yelling and fucking tearing people apart. And they were like, "Yeah, this guy's got the job." <laughs> and it rocketed him into superstardom. Like n- nobody doesn't know who the gunny is, and everyone loved him. Dude, I remember. Well, he I, I remember him in uh, uh, Frighteners. Yeah, and he was a, he, he was a ghost drill sergeant. And he was still terrifying. He mm-hmm. had that TV show Mail Call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Locked, and watch loaded. That. Locked and Loaded was a good show. It's just him fucking shooting machine guns and stuff. It was cool as hell. 
<laughs> that one actually bothered me. I don't usually, I don't grave stain and I don't get torn. I don't get bugged by celebrity deaths, but that one was kind of like, oh man, I liked him. And then the next one I heard was, God damn it, really? Harry Anderson. You know? Oh yeah, holy shit. Night yeah. Court. Harry the Hat, the <sighs> dude from Night Court. Yeah. Grown and... up for exposure in the, t- in the TV, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, oh that's, shit, that's, we lost. That... Pennywise got him. Yeah. Pennywise yeah. finally got Richie Tozier. We coming for you, motherfucking Pennywise. You killed Richie, bitch. God damn it. I went to look up Night Court on Wikipedia, and it gave me Night Witch. Night Wish, which is a Finnish symphonic metal band. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's that not what I wanted. No. Good. No, Google. You're, you're, you're drunk. Go home. I actually, there it goes. Television program. Anyway, though. Yeah, I was. he was only 65 years old, right? Yeah. He. I liked that guy. He was pretty fucking funny. Oh, yeah, he was dude. cool, man. And everything I ever saw him in, I'm like, God, I love this guy. He's great. Night Court, growing up as a kid, I remember watching Night Court with my parents, and I thought it was one of the greatest shows ever. And Lucky enough to catch it in syndication here and there. and It it started to get stale towards the end of its run because it was on for so long, but God damn, that was a really good show. Yeah, he was in an episode of Tales from the Crypt. One of the best ones, Corman's, Cal- ah, Corman's Calamity. Yep, Corman's Calamity. Yep, that's what it was. Um... It's crazy, man. He's, he only did three movies. Really? Yeah. Uh, 1982, The Escape Artist, 2006, Hexing a Hurricane, and then 2014, A Matter of Faith. Yeah, he was more of a TV actor. Yeah, I mean, it was no problem. And a magician. Really? He was on SNL for eight episodes. Yeah. Yeah, because like, if you watch Night Court, that's like one of his gimmicks on the show is that he does magic tricks and shit like that on the bench, and yeah. that borrowed from his real life. He was a magician. Yeah. He also he also tells from the dark side. Holy shit! That's a good show slash good movie. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's yeah, crazy, man. Yep. Who else did we lose, Kendo? We lost Barbara Bush. The first lady went down, so that means George can go out and grab all the ass he wants without any problems at home. <laughs> that's a great loss right there. She was a handsome woman. Yeah. So that was <laughs> so. Babs Bush goes down, and then uh. The only person of these five famous people to score any points in my Deadpool was Bruno Sammart- Bruno Sammartino, you know, Mr. WWE for the longest time. You know, if it wasn't for him, WWF probably would never have survived. You know, he was the draw in the 60s and 70s. He was a uh, champion for what, eight years? Yeah, he held the belt for eight years. He was, an, he was a champion for eight straight years, and then he lost the belt just because he told Vince he wanted some time off. Jeez. So he went in and just well, Vince Senior was just like, "Hey, you know what?" Vince Senior. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, my bad, I didn't know. Then, yeah, Daddy Vince. So he just kind of went in and was one day and was just like, "You know what? I've been doing this for eight straight years. You know, not having a day off. I kind of want a day off." And he dropped the belt, got it back again like a few months later because they needed the draw. And if you've ever want to hear a great story, like look up Bruno San Martino talking about his mother. Uh, it's an amazing story about them dodging the Nazis in Europe. Oh, wow. And also, one of the reasons why they came out with uh, secondary titles like Intercontinental, because a motherfucker had the title for so long, and if he couldn't be a show, like, we got to defend the belt. So even though it was way too long for him to have a belt, we got the whole secondary title concept because of that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pat Patterson was the first Intercontinental champion. That's right. And then also Bismarck, he's on the list. Well, it's <laughs> hoping. His career, at least. Oh, okay, all right. Because like, hey, I'm about to say, I was like, he got what I need, though. <laughs> <laughs> he still has what you need. He just doesn't have much of anything else going on. Uh, I'm, I'm about to say, man, that, that, that's a fourth time in five years now. <laughs> and you know, there's a whole <laughs> slew of internet, you know, hoaxes about people dying. It's a, it's an everyday thing. Oh, all the time, man. Somebody famous dies almost every day on the internet. <sighs> it's, it's either them or their career, man. Yep. Yeah. Only one of them was Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Soon enough. If he dies when we're around him, let's tase his dead body. <laughs> I, think, oh my God. I think he should go to Japan and kill himself in that forest as like a little poetic justice. He can't arrest his ass the minute he gets off the plane because that's how much of a dick that kid is. Wow. That would that'd be some shit. He'd be like, Why, bro? Why are you why are you arresting me, bro? Come prank. on, bro. It's a prank, bro. We'll take him to Saudi Arabia and give him the old office space treatment. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. This is Riyadh, Samir. They are going to saw your hand off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a dark way to start the night's show. <laughs> I'm cool with it. Cool with it. 
we can get a little bit darker. Uh, I got some Tomb Raider news on their um, on the uh, box office mojos. Ooh, let's oh hear my it. God! I want to hear this. So uh, it's been out for thirty one days. It's made. It's done half as good as the Angelina Jolie version, Ooh, and it's ow. pulled down. It's pulled down fifty six domestic. Damn. Its production budget was ninety four. It's worldwide though. It scores in at two twelve, but its domestic is only accounting for twenty one percent of its uh, total take. Now remember, studios don't get as much from the international box right. office. So yeah, yeah I think it's I that that that. yeah, I think it's like sixty percent they get out. Oh, no, 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 sorry, it's like forty percent. My bad. They don't get the majority. They get the minority. Yeah, they get like forty percent out of it. Yeah, so, so it's gonna probably barely make back its budget. When it's Good, fuck that movie. It looked stupid. Well, I mean, like, okay, like, even the Angelina Jolie one, like, it was after a video game, like, you know, we kind of liked, and there were two parts. There wasn't three. There was only two. And even then, like, after, after it came out, I was like, ah, they were okay. And then this new one came out. It's like, nobody asked for this. Nobody asked for this. You're only they, bringing they did it, it the year after the game came out. So it wasn't even tied into the game, oh which was God. weird. It's like, wait, why did it was weird? I, I heard it was actually not that bad. I meant to go see it one time after work. But again, the movie looks so boring, I completely forgot about it until we had the conversation tonight. Well, I mean, it, it's going to end up on Crackle like in you know in a week or two here soon, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Crackle. <laughs> well, the thing is with this is like the Angelina Jolie came, ones came out when uh, Laura Croft Tomb Raider was still relevant. Right. Okay. Not anymore. The, that was a 90s franchise that was still relevant into the early 2000s. Tomb Raider's a thing of a bygone era. Not only yeah. that, but I remember Angela Jolie was fine as fuck, and as much as people want to, and hey, listen, I'm all for, hey, you know, we want uh, uh, you know, good characters, blah, 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 blah. People wanted to see her in a tight-ass t-shirt shooting stuff. This, yeah. You can, you can, you can um, portray what's-her-name as an Oscar winner as many times as you want. Nobody fucking cares about that. She's not a big, busty... Um, Kind of viable action star. Nobody knows who the fuck she is. No, there's no other. There's no reason to watch that movie. None. None. No. I'm looking her up now. Mm. I don't really know much about Alicia Vikander. But and she and even <laughs> then she won an Oscar for a supporting role. I think so. She it was like best supporting actress. Uh yeah. What is it? I don't even care about that. I'm just looking at the fact that she's married to Michael Fassbender. Damn. <clears throat> I mean, well yeah. done, dude. I mean, fast bender over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the box office. She, she's cute, over, but she's not like she's not Angelina Jolie. Fine. Yeah, Angelina Jolie, like two thousand one Angelina Jolie. You were it was hard to find, you know, somebody better looking back then. I don't know. I still, I, I still like hackers at Angelina Jolie. Oh yeah, well nineties Angelina Jolie through like early two thousand. Yeah, wow, she really had a good body. I'm looking at pictures of her from that movie. Hackers are too rude. Tomb Raider. Sorry, I hated this movie. I walked out of the theater. <laughs> oh, the first one. The first. I remember when they, they you know, because we didn't go see it in theaters, but it, when they did like the world premiere on Fox, and I watched, it, I was like, "Wow, this is really bad." And then my dad bought the second one for me because he knew that I was, you know, into Angelina Jolie, and I was like, "Holy shit, Gerard Butler, what the fuck are you doing?" It was a. Except yeah, at the, when he back that time you didn't even know Gerard Butler. End, I was like, "What the? F- she got damn, dude." Yeah. Oh, man. yeah, and they had the horrible CGI monsters that are protecting the cradle, and you're just oh like, "Oh my god, they were they were such shit." Yeah, I was like, "Oh, that's why this franchise died a horrible, painful death." Got it. Damn, dude. There we go. There we go. Yep, yeah, that, I'm that, sending that, you that pictures explains, of her. Yeah, that explains a whole lot. <laughs> like yeah. when I see Angelina Jolie nowadays, and I'm like, "Ew, she's so gross looking." Why do people like her? And then I think of this, and I'm like, "Yep, this is why." She's yeah, she can act. Gross but... now. She's just old, and she got rid of her boobies, and she's all like. Crazy. Oh, 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 did she really? Like, she got them, like, pulled out or whatever? Yeah. Pulled out? Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> she had mean, fake boobs? No, no, no. She had, she like, had her real cancer. ones cut off. Why? Breast cancer, man. Oh, she oh, had breast I, cancer. I, 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 did, I didn't know about that That's at all. a different story. Yeah, I, I thought I, she just yeah, was I making, did not like, know weird breast cancer. cancer. If I remember correctly, she didn't have to do it, but it was... They were saying like it was a pretty high chance that they were it was going to maternalize in her breasts, and she was like, fuck it, I'm not going to risk it, and cut them off. Wow, okay, well, yeah, damn, if it was a medical thing, that's, yeah, that's different, man. And then she, you know, divorced Brad Pitt, and everybody's world crumbled, because like, apparently she's fucking crazy, still. <laughs> <laughs> that's Billy Bob. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember the the vials of each other's blood they would wear around their necks. That was fucking weird. Which is still the funniest goddamn thing. But again, you gotta remember, Angelina Jolie's so fucking crazy. She made Billy Bob Thornton say, "I can't do this shit." Do you know how <laughs> crazy you have to be to make Billy Bob Thornton tap out? That's insane. <laughs> did you Did you watch the video of him on, on the Canadian radio show? One of my favorite videos of all time. He's like, like... He goes, "Would you Would you ask? What do you say? Would you ask Tom Petty?" Or or um, the Beatles and every like there's that awkward that awkward size where it's like motherfucker you ain't Tom Petty or the Beatles no yeah and then, and then like and then, like all of a sudden Canada just got the fucking canceled they're like all right well you fucked yourself real hard right now yeah what's your fucking average band bitch what you getting so upset about like he because the guy just he, I guess he told the dude don't mention my movie career and the guy's like um, well I'm trying to be some sort of an intelligent interviewer so he's like well how do you juggle all that. And he's like, juggle what? J- juggle what? <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, don't, it's like, don't, don't, don't be that guy. But it's just like, yeah, you're an actor first and a musician later. You have to deal with this shit. Like, don't be an asshole. And he was an asshole. And then, like, even even his band, even his bandmates are just like, what the fuck? Are you? Like, the look yeah, in their face, they're just like, like what the fuck are you doing right now? You're fucking this up for us, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like we're trying to get paid, dude. Quit fucking it up. Yeah, Billy Bob's a Cardinals fan, so I'm willing to let that slide. On a positive note, though, Blockers, you know, this, the movie with John Cena, has uh, made 40 domestic and 56 when you take into worldwide on a $21 million budget. So, yeah, their yeah, their budget was 21 million. Not bad. Um, damn, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. That's not no, good for you, maybe John. If, uh, maybe if they uh, waited to to put that movie out, he'd still be in a relationship right now. That's a work. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I love how, who, like, who, who, all who, these websites who, were reporting her, their his breakup. I'm like, who gives a shit? Yeah, it's just like, and and also, I mean, it's John Cena. Come on. See, I will yeah. counter. I will to work. counter to work. that. I was glad to hear about it because it made me laugh at the WWE, like the type of laugh where you point at them and you're howling because of how stupid they were. Because they made that motherfucker they didn't make him, but they came up with the idea to have him propose in in at WrestleMania to her. Which is which is even funnier because that was a fucking year ago. So yeah. a year after, to, almost a year to the day, they fucking break up, and he says, "Get the fuck out of my house." And I'm just <laughs> like, "That's what you fucking get, WWE. <laughs> you wasted everyone's time for years with this shit." And John Cena's like, "You know what? I'm fucking done. I'm done with you. You sign this contract. Get the fuck out of my house." I'm just like, <laughs> "You fucking." Gimmick motherfucker. You that's dumb you... bastard. Man. Well, that's what you should have said. He's going around doing the tour for the movie and stuff and probably seeing all the coups he could be getting, and he's like, I probably shouldn't be engaged. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what? He's just a man after all, so I respect that decision. Yeah, you Fuck got to do best for you, Cena. man. It was best man. for you. Yes. yes. Knock up Amy Schumer. Oh, Oof. she just Oof. got married. Hey, I mean, not, Amy Schumer's not horrible with so, yeah, uh, you're the only, yeah, you're the only person on this show that's going to defend her at all. Listen, so go that, away the only on thing I would. Miss Piggy Island, and you and her can fuck around forever. Listen, just I, because she's just calling on Thursday night. She's all right. Chops that I want on a re- regular basis. Thank you. Well, you're always talking about a pig's pussy, so there you go. You finally <laughs> get one. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> God damn, he got you there. God damn! God damn! What is happening? Well, <laughs> Shit, Speaking Dion, are you okay? Do you need some cream, for, some cream for that burn? Shit. Shit. Oh. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, speaking of pussy and sex and all that good shit, here's time for the Jeff story of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say fucked up countries that are like weird as shit when it comes to sex stuff, what comes to mind? Turkey. Bosnia, Herzegovina. Florida. <laughs> Japan, Germany. There you go. Uh, so this so comes to us from Dortmund, Germany. Oh, Pet- oh my God. <laughs> Headline. Hold on, Brian Leap. Brian Leap, get ready. Okay, now Head- go. Headline: World's first sex doll brothel caters to those who don't want to, t- don't want human touch. So Wait, patrons what? of the patrons of the plastic prostitutes have been mo- ha- or have mostly been respectful, but there was this one guy. So in Dortmund, Germany, they've opened up the first ever uh, doll brothel for dudes to go in and bang oh. dolls. Oh God. So it goes on to say that it might be the ground zero for the next sexual revolution. Think to the world's first uh, brothel show. show It'd be a one-sided on revolution. Dolls. How is it a revolution? It's one-sided. Are the dolls going to become sentient and rise up? I, I'm, not, I'm and, not sure. And they're they're going to be powered by human jizz. 
Is it how Skynet starts? Yeah, maybe. Human. Not with a fucking nuke, but with sex dolls? <laughs> you didn't fuck me right. Nuke the planet. So, <laughs> the the uh, brothel's called Bordal, and it opened last year to John's wanting to uh, enjoy the charms of one of the mo- one or more of the establishment's 13 female sex dolls and one male sex doll, in case that's your kink. Um, each session for the doll cost $101 per hour. Not sure how they came up with that number. Jesus and Christ. the owner, uh, Evelyn Schwartz, says that each doll is booked to work, in quotations, 12 sessions a day. So, so do they like, wipe that shit out when they're done? Or? I would fucking hope so. Because well, I mean, I mean, think think about this. Like, she's like, she's like, she's minting money because you buy the dolls outright for whatever they are, and you only two thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars. Not... Thank you, Kendo. That's weird, but whatever. Um, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the thing right here where it talks. You're about looking at it all right. You, better feel it. <laughs> you make you yeah. make the cost of each doll back in two days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like your your your, your overhead is nothing. You have to worry about health scores or any bullshit like that. You wipe you you wipe them out every you know after every session. Yes. You do a good cleaning. You have you you have That's like your hazmat loops. team. You take them to like, the hose room. <laughs> Do, do you get like replacement vaginas and just snap them in? Yeah, and like, out the other like, ones? like pull it out, and then you're back in, man. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe each plastic prostitute is a different size with different hair color and breast sizes. Jesus so, Christ. since the I doors like have just... opened, uh, Schwartz says all men all over Gener- Germany have patronized the establishment and claims 70% have come back. For me, it's a <laughs> oh. fetish, but more of a curiosity. Schwartz was also quoted as saying that it's not uncommon for women to wait outside in the car while their husband has sex with a doll because they see it as a toy. Uh, she... Yeah, I was just about to ask that question. Like, is Hillary an earshot, Dion? Yes. A- Hillary. I'm right here. If Dion went to fuck a sex doll, would you consider that cheating? No, but it's weird. And <laughs> Thank you. Not be there when he came back. <laughs> you mean like you would? You mean like you would leave me over a fucking a doll? I don't know who you would be. <laughs> what? What? Wait, wait. This, wait this she wouldn't be ditching too. him for cheating. She ditching him for being fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Who I would be? I mean, why? 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 Why did you get mad at me for go fucking something that just lays there instead of you just being the one that lays there? Oh, oh God. God. Oh, Jesus L-L-T. Christ on a cracker. This is our meanest episode. <laughs> <laughs> and Marvel films are for kids. Like yeah. This podcast isn't. No. And it really. Okay. So, so anyway. Schwartz <laughs> said most customers have treated the dolls with respect, but she's already had to replace one doll. Schwartz said a five foot one blonde blue eyed doll's backbone was broken. Jesus. She told Vice the customer created a second asshole. So that co- apparently that customer's name was Eric Lauderback. <laughs> <laughs> he was so, hungry for seconds. So guys, if you're ever wanting to bang a doll and you're in the Dortmund, Germany area, look him up. It's called Bordal, and for $101 you can bang a doll for an hour because you're unable to get a real chick, you fucking loser. And that I mean, is my just. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a place they can go. That woman's fucking minting money. I swear to God, like she said, that, that's the best thing she's ever done. Then why don't Listen, we fucking open? Though, I mean, I'm the all official world class shitter sex doll fuck palace. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing is, it's probably illegal because you're you're not, not not really a bordello. It's just like they pay money, they fuck dolls, you clean them out, done. Like you probably pay like three guys in the hazmat suits to clean shit. That's it. You're essentially it getting like paid by dudes to jack off. Yeah, that's, yeah. Dudes are paying you to jack off. Oh yeah. With, you know, oh yeah. A toy. No, no, no. Here, here's what you do. You, 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 um, you travel around all like the comic cons with, with, with those dolls, and you charge like nerds like hundreds of dollars to do that, and they get to bang their favorite like fucking anime character or something. Done. Oh, that's no, dude, just we, do, we do Princess Leia once because she's dead. <laughs> she's not going to get offended. Yeah, she can't sue us. Exactly, exactly. You put her in the fucking outfit or whatever. You dress her up, you know, and boom, done. You, you make, Still you make your money. Lips. Until Brian steals it from us. Oh my god. I can't poke at cervix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a little tidbit from our live stream on Friday the 13th. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's all about pounding that cervix. So since we've lost about 80% of the listeners for this week's episode, should we talk about Marvel? You're going to say we talked about the MCU or Star Wars. I wasn't going to bring up that franchise until you brought it up, but fuck it. it it's <laughs> shitty. Dion, if they make Lando bisexual, how are you going to feel? I'm going to flip out. I'm like, what the <laughs> actual fuck? Oh, what the actual fuck? 
Yeah, it's the worst idea. Like, they've ruined Han Solo's character, and now they're going to ruin Lando's. Well, I mean, like, like... Oh, Billy D. Williams won't come back. He wouldn't kiss a guy on screen. Well, duh. It's Billy D. Williams. Well, and, and also, I mean, was, was, there, was there any indication of his sexuality in any of the no, movies? Like, there's no, no indication yeah. of either. But the fact that they're forcing it to, like, be, be, to be this way is dumb. He was a ladies' man because remember Hans like you old smoothie. Oh yeah, yeah. no 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 no. Yeah, you're right. 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 yeah, I was gonna say you he are right. Lay his hand in a very lingering manner. You are right, sir. You are right. And then Billy D. Williams is known as this like you know, cool black dude, sex icon. Yeah, so... Cole forty five works every time. Yeah. <laughs> there was a phone number you could dial, and he his uh, voice recording would play. Yeah, he called it twice. Oh, oh yeah, I've God. called before. Why wasn't he a black dynamite? God damn it, he was busy. Yeah. He's too cool for that. He's too expensive for that kind of Probably. shit. Because Billy D. Williams had like a big career. <laughs> He's no, actually he a well-known actor. Yeah, my grandma well, knows Billy D. Williams. Well-known, well-accomplished actor. Yeah, he was in Batman. Yeah, he was in Star Wars. Yeah. He was in Mahogany. <laughs> um. He was in some Colt 45 ads. Yeah. I don't know what else. He's He's the only Star Wars actor to reprise his role to do the audio novels. So. Maybe he's not as accomplished as we'd like to think he is. <laughs> Wait, get his filmography. We have to defend his honor. I'm eye. looking it up well, right he did, now. He did a lot of like good movies in the 70s and Holy 80s. He did one with um, uh, Diana Ross. What was the name of that movie? Where? Mahogany. There you go. That's Mahogany. Okay. Okay. Um, he's on a, he, His first movie, as I'm seeing it on Wikipedia, is The Last Angry Man in 1959. 1959. He's been an active actor for almost six. I know he had a birthday recently, and he hit the old 81. Yeah, he's uh, he's up there. He is. Let's see. He is. Uh, yeah, 81, 81 years old. Born. Like I'm 19... fucking talking to myself here. Yeah, I know. I would. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying anymore. Um, April 6, 1937. Uh, but um, let's see. Let's look at his filmography. We have Last Angry Man, Out of Town, or his Final Countdown. Lady Sings the Blues. He's got a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Hogany, the Bingo, Long Travel, All-Star, All-Star. and Motor Bingo King. Long and the Traveling All-Stars. Okay. Um, Empire Strikes Baseball. Back, Night Ho- uh, Nighthawks, uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, dude, he's, on, he's on a lot of stuff, man. When he dies, we will have a memorial episode for him. I'm down. We'll drink Colt 45. I will. I'll drink some garbage just in memory of Billy. <laughs> I D. will. <laughs> I'll get really fucked up on six of them, but I'll do it. Oh my god, he did. He did a '90s Alien movie called Alien Intruder. Yeah, maybe his career is just. <laughs> okay, he's a well-known actor. <laughs> but str- Dion, remember Wait. when we have our skit show? We're gonna do the parody, Billy D. You know the rest. We yes. don't sit on air. Well, he's okay. He was also in the Ladies' Man and Undercover Brother. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was the president in Undercover Brother or the general. Yeah, yeah the. General's Chicken. General's Chicken, yeah. He was in Fanboys as well. Like, he's, you know, he's, he, do, he even did, the, wait, he did the Lego movie and then the Lego Batman movie. Yeah. Oh, it's Lando? Uh, well, he was, he, apparently in the Lego Batman movie, he was Harvey Dent and Two-Face. Well, oh, that would make sense, because yeah, he was Harvey Dent and Batman which is, 89. Which is yeah. hilarious that they made that, like, somebody went to that length to do that. Like, that's fucking hilarious. And Awesome. Right, Aaron uh, Eckhart. Essentially, the Burton Not suit, my so. fucking Harvey. <sighs> of course, suck it, is. suck it, Aaron Eckhart. <sighs> you mean Dee we have to go to the center way. of the earth? <laughs> no, but I would much rather have had Billy D. Williams as my Harvey Dent. Blame Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, Aaron Eckhart. Tommy Lee Jones is kind of an asshole too. So fuck them both. <laughs> There's my stance. Yeah, when Tommy Lee Jones dies. I won't care. My I mom will care. Breathe. I love Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. When Gabby Hoffman dies, we'll oh shed a God. tear. Oh, dude. Dion, I'm with you there. Volcano was amazing. Fuck God, Dante. I love that movie, is. too. Fuck Dante's Peak. Yeah, fuck you, hey. Dante. Even though you got Pierce Brosnan, we got, we got motherfucking Tommy Lee Jones as, a, as an emergency manager and Don Cheadle. He's Don Cheadle Black with a goddamn backwards golf hat on the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> Don Cheadle trying to be part, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. The best part of that movie is when the guy jumps out of the back of the train car oh with the other God. person's body and he melts. He's like, and that, is, that is like I watched it as a kid. That, that is a terrifying fucking scene. I was like, holy yep. shit. Yep. That movie affirmed my love, reaffirmed my love of natural disaster films. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We should we should do that over the well. Dude, no, no, no. We Dam, need to do a commentary like, for we need to do a, a an actual drunk commentary for Geostorm. 
Oh, because that movie like, fucking natural, deserves it. Let's do a natural disaster month over on Patreon. We're going to do Geostorm, <laughs> oh, Volcano, yeah. Day After Tomorrow, oh, and what will be our f- fourth and final movie? <coughs> uh, Armageddon? Uh, I don't know if I can sit through Armageddon without Joel to, you know, talk about his girlfriend. <laughs> There's got to be a horrible fucking Earth Joel, movie. You don't want to close your eyes? I don't want to fall asleep. Because you miss Joel? Or, well, no, no, no. There is, yeah, there, there's a horrible Earth movie, isn't it? Like San Andreas or whatever? Yeah, oh, I, yeah, that yeah. one was terrible. Let's do it. All right, we got it. Okay, um, so I guess we should pencil that in for what? July? Yeah, I was of, July of, of 2019. Yeah, of 2019. <laughs> we don't have Patreon stuff recorded that far in advance. Okay, I was, I was about to say because we're so busy. That's why. Uh, no, no, that that's entirely fine. That's entirely fine. Uh, I'm down with that. I'll I'll cultivate the, the the material and give it to you guys accordingly. All right. Thank you, sir. So, guys, we got something different on tonight's show. Actually, it's not different. If you're a long-time listener of the show, you remember when we used to have our main features where we'd do the news, then the main feature, and then whatever else we felt like doing. But tonight's a special night because tonight is the last night of world-class bullshitters before Avengers Infinity War is released. And I'm going to put it like this. After next week's show, comic book movies will be very different because Captain America will probably be dead. But we're, we've never seen a build-up for something like this. It's been ten years Ten solid years, and Dion and I have been uh, watching these since they came out. Like, you know, I thought about it the other day. I don't think I've missed this. I haven't missed a single one of these in theaters. I think I saw every one on the first day they opened. Yep. I, like the only one I haven't seen the first day was Iron Man. I waited until Hillary and I went to go see it in the theater. But everyone else, I've seen either the first day or that Saturday after. So, because I remember you and I went to see Iron Man two. We saw it before it came out in America yes. illegally, and yes. then we watched it that Thursday night at the theater. So, yep. For anyone who wants to bitch about piracy, yeah, we may have pirated that movie, but we went and paid to see it the following that week. So, and then I saw it two other times. Fuck that movie. Eh, it is. It's not that good, but I understand yeah. why people don't like it that much. Well, look at tonight. We're gonna do something different. We're gonna rank all the Marvel films. We have an aggregate list that Kendo's compiled. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then we're going to talk about a few other things. We're going to uh, maybe throw out some predictions for Infinity War, some things we'd like to see. Maybe we'll even try to throw out a couple guesses for Avengers 4, which no one knows the title of yet. Apparently it's a spoiler. But we'll find out. And I don't even care about Part 4. In one week, I'll be in the theater watching Infinity War, and I can't wait for that. So Avengers 4, Electric Boogahore. <laughs> I, I think I'd watch that one. Yeah. I'm just a real quick disclaimer before we start putting on our list. Folks, these are our opinions. We will justify them, but remember, they might be different than yours. So please refrain from calling us fucking retards in the comment section. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and a spoiler alert, we all shit on Spider Man Homecoming. So if you think it's the best movie, um, it's probably not the show the for you, hour. kids. Yeah, the next hour of this podcast is not for you. And if the first hour was, you have good taste. <laughs> But the second hour, if you like Spider-Man Homecoming, don't listen, because it probably will make you cry. Yeah. So I guess what we'll do, Kendo, you have the list mm-hmm. aggregated, right? Uh, every, I've, got, I've got everybody's but Nick's. So how about this? Nick, do you have your list made yet? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it done, man. I finally got it done. So why don't we do this, Kendo? Nick can read his list off first. He'll go in... Let's go in reverse order. Or is that cool with you, Kendo, or is that going to throw you off? You mean like worst to first? No, I'll be fine. I'll be able to keep okay. up with it as long okay. as he does So it. we're going to do... Okay, listeners, what we're going to do is we're going to do worst to first. Nick's going to go first. Then after Nick goes, while Kendo's compiling mm-hmm. the list, then Dion will go, then I will go, then Kendo will go, and, and then Kendo will also close us out with the aggregate. How's yeah, that? I'll, yeah, because I'll, between your guys' explanations of why you picked what and all that stuff, I'll have plenty of time to fucking crunch these numbers. It's very scientific. Perfect. I even have the scientific setting on my uh, you know Windows calculator up. Ooh. All right, well... Adjust that pocket protector because it's fucking time to talk about pocket. every MCU film. Well, I don't have any pockets on my shirt either. But, folks, we mentioned at the earlier part of this episode that when we talk about the Netflix series, those will be over on Patreon. So make sure you join us for World Class Bullshitters After Hours, which is your after show that debuts every week right after this show. So, Nick, take it away. All right. Worst of first. Worst. Homecoming. Yes. Iron Man 2. Hulk. Doctor Strange. Oh. Thor, um, Dark, whatever. The Dark World. You can't even the, get dark the Dark World. Wiener. Well, no, I, I, I read it real quick, so it says Thor 2. So. Thor Darkness. Yeah. Brother Darkness. <laughs> Spread it. Starring Idris Elba. <laughs> and his brother Voodoo. That's a random reference. Let's Sorry. see. Uh, Black Panther. Ooh. 
Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, yes, Avengers 2, Thor, Captain America 2. Hang on, slow down. So you were at Guardians, and then you said Ultron, so that's 10. Okay, okay. so what was, what was number 9? Okay, after, after Avengers, uh, after Age of Ultron, there was Thor. Got it. Uh, Captain America, um, Civil War, I think. Uh, it's, it, it, no, sorry, Captain America 2 is... Um, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, Soldier. yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Iron Man 3. All right. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, Avengers 1. Ant-Man. Captain America, Captain America 1. And then Iron Man 1. Your list is almost unacceptable. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know. I, I know. I, was. I, I, knew it'd be. I knew it would be. How the fuck you got Captain? the first Captain America as being better than Winter Soldier? I, dude, Captain America wanted so much fun. After that, it just—he's a it, retard. It just—it just—it just went—it just went to <laughs> shit. Dion, we had the it was all about, that was, it was for all everyone. About, it was all about him and his boyfriend. After that, I was like, "All right, cool, your I friends wanna here." You. I want to hit you right now. I've never wanted to hit you in our relationship. But I want to hit you. <laughs> no, no. Part two and three were about his boyfriend. Okay, fuck you. That's, that's what it was it's about. His boyfriend, his best friend, who he thought was dead for the last fifty years. You, you know what? I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna just do my. You know what, Nick? If you ever become a fucking double agent that you can't control your shit, I will fight for you until the end. <laughs> Fuck Just that. Saying, man. I'm going to wait till we can have an epic fight. So I'm going to say, hey, remember when you said that Winter Soldier was about him and his boyfriend? I'm going to shoot you in the fucking face. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what, Dion, while your anger is up high, let's 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 have you go your list worst to first. God damn it, Nick. Like, I, I, if, 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 if Jeff gets turned to a double agent, I'm saving his ass. But if Nick gets turned to a double agent, I'm going to kill that motherfucker in the first scene we have. Good. Here. Good. Not you me. do that. You shoot me right in the goddamn head, sir. You take I me will. out. You take me out. So since uh, Kendo has uh, my list uh, compiled in, in our world class bullshitter calculator, I'm actually going to include um, the Netflix show since technically they are part of the same universe. So we'll be um, talking about those on Patreon. That's cool. Yeah, that's Patreon. Wait, I can't have in my rankings. No, 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 no. Just take them out. Just boom, take oh, them out. Gotcha. Make them disappear. Oh, uh, never mind then. Uh, fuck that shit. Fuck you guys. Um, so of the movies. Um, <laughs> This is worst to first. So at the very bottom, Spider-Man Homecoming. No one can tell me how it's a good movie. It's not Spider-Man. I'm tired of seeing Spider-Man as a goddamn kid. The characters are fucking annoying. And even if you take out Marissa Tomei and Michael Keaton doing their best to float the movie, you realize that it's only Michael Keaton and Marissa Tomei holding up the whole goddamn movie. Plus, I don't want to see fucking spider-man with a goddamn jarvis in his head that's dumb i don't like that so that's why it's at the very fucking bottom next up iron man 2 i actually like iron man 2 but if i'm being objective and honest with myself that movie is long as shit i love the story of him you know being poisoned by 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 the arc reactor but again it's just so long he only he's only iron man three times in the movie that's unacceptable um after that, Iron Man 3. Again, I like Iron Man 3, but again, objective, being honest. Um, you know, turning the Mandarin into Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce could have been better used as a different villain if you wanted to do that. Plus, you had goddamn Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin. What the fuck? God, that's just... <laughs> it, it makes me so upset. I'm like, right now, I might, I might piss myself. I'm so angry. Um, <laughs> next, Thor. I enjoy Thor. But again, I mean, it, it, it definitely was nice to round out before Avengers. Um, but again, it was it was definitely kind of the the last ditch before before the big uh, completion of Phase One. Next up after that, Thor Ragnarok. I actually enjoy Thor Ragnarok. It's you know it's 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 funny. It has big changes. But again, I don't like the whole changing. Um, being objective again here, as far as its place in the franchise, you know forcing Odin's sister into the thing and she has this unstoppable fucking power and then the biggest issue I had with Ragnarok again even though I thoroughly enjoyed it was they destroyed Mjolnir I don't like that that doesn't make a lot of sense and it's oh Mjolnir was just the thing to focus your power shut the fuck up Anthony Hopkins that's a dumb reason um next up Black Panther more hype than movie it wasn't a bad movie it's a good movie what's his name as as the king of Wakanda Chadwick uh, Bossman does a good job 
Uh, but again, it's it's not better than the other movies on this list. That's just that's just being honest. Next up, Age of Ultron. I thoroughly enjoy Age of Ultron. Again, my issue being that Ultron, as much as James Spader did a great job as the voice, him saying that he was lonely, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Uh, next up, Incredible Hulk. You know, outside of Edward Norton, Edward Norton being Edward Norton, it's a good movie. Um, incre- after Incredible Hulk, Captain America: The First Avenger, where it fucking belongs, because there's no way that it's the goddamn second best Marvel movie. Nick. Um, <laughs> after that, Doctor Strange. I, 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 God, I love Doctor Strange. It's such a great movie. Uh, Benedict. Butter and cream buns does a great job. As your dick coming in her snatch. Yeah, he is. He does a fantastic I job. Do, I do like that man, but that movie, uh, that movie was too long and too magical, and it, it, it was at the bottom of the per- list. It is perfect length. It is. It might be the best introductory movie for the characters in this franchise. Not to mention the way that they show Dormandu as this scary ass big motherfucker. You don't know how long Doctor Strange was trapped in that goddamn time loop with him. You know, and even though they made the ancient one Tilda Swinton, even though I love Tilda Swinton, she did a good job, especially when her ass fell out of the mirror dimension on the sidewalk. I I audibly laughed when I when I saw that. But uh, <laughs> uh, next up, Thor: The Dark World. I love the dark Thor: The Dark World. Especially when you know Mjolnir's flying in and out of the goddamn um, different different dimensions and shit. That shit was really cool. Next up, Guardians of the Galaxy. I thoroughly love that movie. I actually like the goddamn soundtrack. It was a change of pace. Fantastic. Uh, next up, Ant Man. God damn, that movie is beautiful. It's just a, it it's just a beautiful. I love really Ant Man. My fucking Michael Pena has a bit part and he damn near steals the show. <laughs> Paul Rudd, perfect casting choice. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, love it. Randomly, Sly Stallone's in that motherfucker. Um, you got Kurt Russell er, ends up being an evil, mean motherfucker who's killing his kids. God damn, that's dark. Next up, uh, to round out the top of the top, tip top, tippity top, Winter Soldier. It's, I don't need to say anything. It's way better than the first one. God damn it. I don't know what Nick's talking about. Plus, you have that fight scene between the Winter Soldier and Captain America. Epic. Um, then Iron Man, beginning of the franchise, the perfect casting choice, great story. Uh, number two, Avengers. Again, the culmination of Phase One. You know, it it it's, it was what top five most highest grossing movies of all time. The the it was an event. It was the fucking Avengers. It did so it did so well. It changed the game in movies that DC freaked out and decided they needed to do their own goddamn franchise. It was the beginning of franchise movies of our era. I love the Avengers. God damn it. And then number one, which probably should just originally it should be called Avengers Three: Captain America: Civil War. That movie was fantastic. I mean, it, the 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 fight scene between. Cat, Bucky, and, and Iron Man, the weight of that movie, the, the progression, the true introduction of Black Panther, him being cool, just a, a fantastic film, and it is the best MC movie to date until next Friday. All right, Jeff, I got a follow-up. Can, I, uh, can I interrupt real quick, gentlemen? I'm just going to give you two movies. It's a tiebreaker vote. I just, I'm just going to throw two movies out there. I got two of these. Just tell me which one you would choose between. So if I said, for example, Guardians 2 or um, Winter Soldier. Jeff? Winter Soldier, Winter hands Soldier. down. Guardians 2. God damn it. Okay, I got to come up with a different tiebreaker. Ah, fuck it. I'm just going to go this direction. All right. And, All right, we good? And then if I were to say Civil War or the First Avengers. Civil War. Civil oh, War. First Avengers. God fucking damn it. Once again... <laughs> We're once again, so uh, we're not good right now. So come back to me. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. So I'm I'm ranking these as like things I would like rewatch over again, and most of them I won't. Like the top like five, I will. But after that, it gets you really. You need fun. to rewatch those Captain America movies so, and realize that you've made a grave mistake. <laughs> so am I. That's why we just got the tiebreaker ended up being two to two. Well, yeah. like I, okay. we need to get uh, we need to get Mike Pence on the phone. He cast the tie breaking vote in the Senate, right? <laughs> no, what we need to do is get a bunch of bars of soap, put them in the sock, and beat the ever living shit out of you and Nick. If you honestly believe, I can't, I can't even look at you two right now. <laughs> well, you're not. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't because the camera's off. <laughs> well, if I were looking at you, I wouldn't want to look at you right now. Listen, well, I, you know, I, last I, time I checked, I didn't, you know, score a uh, movie you didn't like really high. <laughs> 
Well, you know, maybe you're. I mean, you were pretty much in lockstep. And Nick's just a shitty list maker right now. Uh, no, I, I, I've watched those movies, and they were like to me, they were boring. I just didn't like Take them. Take your candy ass back to Samoa. <laughs> I did. I, honestly, some of those I honestly did not like them. I was like, yeah, it's fine, it's whatever, you know, it's okay. Um, but like, I guess did you I'm pay just, attention. Uh, I, I guess I just really don't. I'm really over all the all the all the superhero stuff, and I'm just like, all right, I got to make the list. Those movies are five years old, though. So were you over them five years ago? Yeah, I was over them five years. Not ago. Goddamn, if you're over, the, if you're over right the superhero thing, how do you not pick the two the two the two best ones? Arguably, the two best ones: Winter Soldier and Civil War. That kind of go away from the whole cookie cutter superhero do the best thing all the time. Especially when you see fucking Sam Jackson get gunned down in cold blood in another dude's apartment. What 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 part of that makes you go? Oh God, I'm so sick of this fucking superhero bullshit. That's see, and you've convinced me. One tiebreaker boat has been fixed. <laughs> Good man. Thank you. <laughs> it's harder for me to go back and watch the Phase 1 stuff over the uh, newer stuff, because it's not even fair anymore. But let me let me go into my list real okay. quick. So, worst of first. Worst, Iron Man 2. Fuck that movie. God damn it, do I hate Iron Man 2 with a passion. <laughs> I actually get depressed and angry when I think about having to watch it. So, like, tomorrow when I go to Phil's to do our all-weekend Marvel marathon... Are you sure you're not going to be depressed and angry because you're at Phil's? Okay, fine. That's number one. Number two is Iron Man 2. There are parts of that movie that are fucking incredible, and there are parts, most parts of that movie are stupid. Yeah. Justin Hammer is stupid. Mickey Rourke is pretty stupid. I don't care about his fucking board. I hated that part. The part in Monaco was kind of cool when he, you know, was whiplash and he fought him with the other armor in the briefcase. That was neat. I love the opening of the Stark Expo. I don't like how he just randomly makes a new element and his dad always had it out there in the open floor. Yeah, that was that was weird, man. I Yeah, that, th- that one I'm not a fan of very much. Like, I, yeah. Not not a fan. It what's nice though is that Iron Man two, in my opinion, is a misstep, but they really course corrected to get to Avengers the right way. So yeah. back to the list though. Iron Man three. I don't like this movie. Again, when I think about it, it's just one I never ever want to watch again. I'm not a fan of Shane Black's movies that aren't Lethal Weapon or <laughs> Okay, he well, he's in Predator. He didn't make Predator. I love Predator. And I like the nice guys. Put it like this. I don't like Iron Man 3. <laughs> anyway, number 16 is Spider-Man Homecoming. For all the reasons you guys have said, plus some. Where's the great power and great responsibility? What's the impetus for being Spider-Man? Why does he have an onboard AI? It's stupid. It takes away any kind of drama and emotion. We were riding high with Spider-Man 1 and 2. 3 did suck. Then we really hit new lows with the Amazing franchise. And I guess we're about on par with Spider-Man 3 at this point for Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, Next for me, number 15, is Thor The Dark World. I like this movie enough, but I don't remember that much of it to really, really, really be critical about it. Number 14, Thor Ragnarok. I think it's the most overrated, well, no, almost the most overrated Marvel movie in existence. <laughs> it's it's good enough, and I enjoy it, but I never want to watch it again. I don't like that Molnir's destroyed. I, Hela was cool. I, I, I like that the Hulk was in the movie, but at the same time, I didn't like how they changed the Hulk. I liked him when he was a little more savage. Number 13, Captain America, the first Avenger. Second half of this movie is great. The first half's kind of sucky. Uh, Peggy Carter's hot. Chris Evans is great in this movie. I like that he's fighting in World War II. It's a lot of fun. Maybe uh, they could have pepped up a little bit at the beginning, and maybe they could have done the... Uh, the, the best parts are the montages of the film, so there's that. Here's my first controversial one. Number 12, Guardians of the Galaxy. Good movie. I feel like a lot of the hype comes from the soundtrack and other shit. And it's it's fine. It's a fine movie. It makes me laugh and I enjoy it. But I, there's a reason I don't own it. Number 11, Black Panther. Like Dion said, it's very heavy-handed and preachy. And it's fun. It's a fun movie. But it doesn't deserve to be the highest-grossing superhero film of all time. It's not the cultural event that people are trying to make it out to be. Um, there have been black superheroes before. There will be black superheroes after Black Panther. And Black Panther isn't even the best superhero film to feature a black lead. Number 10, Thor. I love Thor. I think a lot of people um, give Thor a lot of shit. What I enjoy about the movie more than anyone else is the fact that you get to watch him be humbled and he has to basically become selfless to earn his power back. And one thing about Thor that a lot of people don't think about either is that Thor is the most important of the Phase 1 to lead into the Avengers storyline because it builds, you know, the Cosmic Cube, a.k.a. the uh, Tesseract, and Loki and all that stuff. So Thor really does lead into the Avengers more so than any of the other movies. 
After Thor, we have Avengers Age of Ultron. I This movie is fine when I watch it, but when I, do, when I think about it, I like it less. But when I watch it actively, I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I like that it sets up for Black Panther and Wakanda. The ending looks really awesome. I love some of the costumes in this movie, especially Captain America's suit when he fights in Sokovia. Uh, and I'm okay that Quicksilver died. It added some drama, and I really like the vision. Next up, I have The Incredible Hulk. I think this movie is vastly underrated. Edward Norton's fine, but I really like the uh, interaction between him and Liv Tyler, and I really like when he goes to New York and the uh, blood drips on, what's his name, Samuel Stern's head. He's about to become the leader. Yep. Like, There's all kinds of cool shit they build up for that. And man, the best part of that movie for me is when Tim Roth has the super soldier serum and he goes run at the Hulk, and the Hulk kicks him into that tree and all of his bones break, yep. and then it just cuts to black. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's awesome. Number seven, Doctor Strange. I thought it was visually stunning. I like Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. I love his voice. There's so much there that makes me care about the character. And the ending is one of my favorite endings, especially, you know, the whole Dormammu have come to bargain. I think it's fantastic. Number six, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I didn't expect to like this movie as much as I did, but it probably has one of the best endings in terms of emotion, especially with Yondu. They made me care about a character I don't care about. When he's like, you know, he may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy, and I'm Mary Poppinjaw. There's so many great lines <laughs> of dialogue from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And there was a lot of emotion that you didn't expect, especially at the end with the Ravagers yep. and all that shit, yeah. where they gave him his funeral and all. I was like, God damn, this, that movie like just had the perfect ending. And it was good the whole way through, especially when Star Lord found out that Kurt Russell killed his mom. Yes. Oh my god! He came out of that thing. I was like, Jesus he literally Christ, has stars weird. in his eye. Literally has stars in his eyes, and then they go away. I love that. Yeah, that. That was an incredible moment. I just remember like the air getting sucked out of the uh, I almost said the arena. This isn't WrestleMania. It sucked <laughs> out of the theater. Number five is Ant Man. I thought this movie was gonna suck because they fired Edgar Wright and he used to be one of my favorite directors, and then Ant Man comes out and it blows me away. Somebody I think it was you Dion that said Michael Pena steals some of the scenes. Yep. Michael Pena is like the best part of that fucking movie. Yes. And wasn't wasn't T I one of the other guys? Yeah, yeah, yep. he was one of yep. <laughs> And then the random Russian dude, like, I loved every single character. Even the little kid who's normally pretty annoying. Like, the only person I thought was a dick was Bobby Carnavale's character. Yeah. But he was meant to be a dick. Yeah, he was right. a dick with a purpose. Yeah. The villain was kind of bland, but it made sense. I liked Janet. I really liked Hank Pym. And Paul Rudd's just lovable in every movie he's in. So you can't really go wrong with Paul Rudd. And he's a chief Number man. four. Well, good for him. Good for you, actually. Not really good Number for him. They don't win anything. That's cool. Okay, Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Number four is Iron Man. Uh, this is the movie that started it all, obviously. And Dion and I definitely remember an era where there was no MCU, and you would get a lot of superhero movies, but this one felt different, especially at the end, like that first post credit sequence mm -hmm. where Nick Fury kind of comes out of the shadows. He's like, I'm putting together a team. And you're just like, oh my God, maybe one day that'll happen. And now 10 years later, we're 18 films deep. Now we're kind of waiting for this shit to end. But either way, it's been an incredible journey. Number three for me is The Avengers. Uh, this is the best theater-going experience I've ever had in my entire life. And it's the movie I've seen in theaters more than anything else. I saw it four times over the course of like four weeks, I think. I went and saw it every week. I loved this movie. I thought it was incredible. It was one of those movies where, like, I walk. I went in to see the whole Phase 1 marathon with Joel. We had a great time. But when I walked out, I felt shit was different in terms of superhero movies. Yeah, they had made money before, and The Dark Knight had made a billion dollars. But, like, you get a feeling. Like, when you left Star Wars The Force Awakens, we all left kind of like, fuck this movie. I felt dejected. When we got, when the group of the guys that went and saw The Avengers with me, we were all, like, really pumped. We're like, holy shit. Like, this, we've seen something epic, and I can't wait for more. And it's been epic ever since number two the winter soldier dion you and i saw this movie opening day yep. in new orleans yep yep and we when we were just in new orleans last week we kept bringing up this movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we we're just like remember when we saw fucking winter soldier here and blah 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 yeah, absolutely man that was another one of those movies where i didn't really read or watch many of the trailers or read any of the interviews i was already sold on the movie because i loved captain america but that was a game changer. That took us into a whole other level of reality within the MCU. Iron Man had reality or verisimilitude where, you know, the people treat it like it's real. But the Winter Soldier just felt not necessarily plausible, but there were moments where it felt very plausible. And I loved the whole power struggle between Nick Fury and uh, Robert Redford's character. Mm -hmm. The ending's cool. 
it's it's very toned down compared to the other films, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It actually amps up the action in many ways. And Scarlett Johansson looks really hot in that movie. Yes, agreed. It does. And then by the process of elimination, my number one is Captain America Civil War. I remember reading the Civil War comic book in 2006, and I thought it was epic. This, obviously, it's different from the books, but that doesn't mean anything. I think the movie's better than the books in every conceivable way. It was It was one of those movies where I went in... And I was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of fun, but there are things I don't like. Like, I hated the Spider-Man costume and this and that and the other thing. But I went, I left the theater and I liked everything. I thought Black Panther was fantastic. I think he's better in that movie than he is his own movie. Mm-hmm. I thought Tom Holland was uh, tolerable because he was only in it for about 15 minutes. The fight scene in Germany is cool. But the best part of the movie for me is the ending. Just the single fight, between, well, it's a three-way actually, between Cap, Bucky, and Iron Man. Well, uh, what's his name? Not Arnim Zola. Uh... Baron Zemo watches from a distance. Like, he effectively tore apart the Avengers, one guy with no superpowers. And that means a lot more to me than watching a fucking killer robot or an invading army of aliens destroy a city. Like, the the, the small scale of that battle, but the emotions were higher than anything else. And I, the part where, uh, you know, he's like, uh, that was my father's shield or whatever, and he just drops it and walks away, and Iron Man's suit is deactivated and he can't do anything. It's just really fucking cool. And one thing I did notice today when I was watching, like, a little retrospective on the Avengers. So, Dion, you know the uh, image of Captain America and Iron Man when he uh, hits him with the Unibeam? Yeah. Well, if you watch if you watch the first Avengers, he does that move. Yeah, when they're, when they're fighting, fighting the Jatari. Yep. And, they, and then that's, and that's when they finally come together, and then they do the move again as they finally are torn apart. So I was like, that's kind of a cool... Probably didn't even mean anything, but I, I pieced those together myself, and I was thinking, that's kind of cool. So that's my list of the MCU. Kendo, take it away. All right, and I've got everything compiled. Um, and uh, I actually, while we were doing all this, I actually had a change of heart about my top spot, so we'll get to that. Because <laughs> I just realized how much I really fucking love that movie. All right, so... Uh, for me, number 18 is Iron Man 4 Homecoming for <laughs> most of the reasons why we've already discussed on top of the fact that if you're a listener to this channel, you've heard me call it that many times for a reason. It's not even a Spider-Man movie. Plus, they fuck the origin story up. They, they don't give him the motivation. And even though I'm a Michael Keaton mark and I've always wanted to bang Marissa Tomei and she looks fine as shit as an older lady in this movie, that's not enough to save it and bring it off the top bottom of the heap. I... Would don't ever have any desire to watch this movie again. Uh, number seventeen is Thor: The Dark World. I don't. It was whatever. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah it, it, just say it. It was shit. It was shit. It was terrible, but it was marginally better than. If you put a gun to my head, I would watch it over. Definitely not terrible, but continue. Hey, it's got Cat Dennings, so <laughs> her large-breasted her self. God damn. Uh, her face is whatever. My God, her boobs are so great. <laughs> number sixteen is Iron Man Two for. All the reasons everybody said, plus I had to put something behind it when it came to Dark World and uh, Homecoming. Um, <laughs> 15 is Iron Man 3 for the reasons seen above. Uh, you know, they, they're better than those others. Uh, 14 is Avengers Age, Age Voltron. I had it ranked the lowest of the four of us. I It was okay, but I found myself having a hard time watching it just because I was bored in many parts. 13 is Black Panther. It would have probably been a lot higher rated if it would have been 30 minutes shorter and it wouldn't have been forced full of jokes. And, you know, I'm looking at you. What are those, girl? Uh, <laughs> 12, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, it was good. I. It was one of those things that if the MCU would have stopped after six movies, it would have probably been a lot higher. But they just came out with stuff <laughs> I enjoyed a lot better. Um, 11 is where we get Thor Ragnarok. Uh Jeff told me when I rented it, he said, you're going to enjoy it, you're going to laugh, and then you're never going to watch it again. I'm like, "Mm, we'll see how that goes. And I enjoyed it, I laughed, and I never wanted to watch it again. (laughs) (laughs) And then 10 is Thor. It was the best of the Thor movies. I did like the movie, but I like other other MCU movies much better, like Captain America First Avenger at number nine. Number eight. More of a segue. Number eight, Doctor Strange. I did not expect to like this movie. It was one of the last ones of the MCU I watched. I told Jeff, I was like, hey, I'm going to watch uh, Doctor Strange this morning before I go to work. And then I messaged him back two, two hours later like, wow, I really fucking like this movie. It looked good. It was cool. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. Number seven, Captain America Civil War. 
it, the only knock I have on it is it was just a little too long. Maybe if it was like 20 minutes shorter, it would have been better. But whatever. Uh, six is Captain America Winter Soldier. Liked it better than Civil War. Five <laughs> is Iron Man, the one that started it all. It holds up, stands the test of time. Four is Guardians 1. And it's not because of the soundtrack. I just really enjoyed it. Uh, number three is Guardians 2 because it was a lot of fun and it was way better than the first Guardians. I didn't expect to like either one of them and I loved the shit out of them. Number two, this is where I had to change your heart while we were talking, is the Avengers. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was great. I remember I was teaching when that movie came out and one of the kids came to school with a bootleg because I worked in an area <laughs> where bootlegs are prevalent. <laughs> And he was like, good kid, good kid. And it was pretty much, hey, Mr. Hofe, can we, can we watch Avengers? And I was like, yeah, sure, put it in. And we pretty much watched it every day for about a week. And then <laughs> my number one movie, because I just, for a long period of time, like I, I started with the MCU, but it got to be too much, too many superhero movies. And I just got out of it for a while. I didn't watch any for a few years. That's why I was catching up with it over the last several months when we decided to do this. This one, I rented it about a year ago. I watched it, and it made me really just love the genre all over again. It is Ant-Man. If you watch the trailers, you're probably like, oh, this will be okay. But if you watch the movie, it's fun. It is fun from beginning to end. Paul Rudd is amazing and a Chiefs fan. Um, that had little bearing on it. Every character in this in the in the movie is fun. Every character in the movie is good. Every character is great. There's humor in it, but it's not forced. It's well timed. Like when the giant ant is like standing in the front yard, it's I can't. I bought it. I had to buy it, and I've watched it probably about six or seven times since then. And it's a movie I could legitimately watch every other day or something like that because I don't have the time to watch it every day. So my number one is Ant Man. Infinity War. You got a lot of work to do to break up between me and Ant-Man, and I'm seriously, genuinely looking forward to Ant-Man and the Wasp because that chick is hot. Yeah. No, it looks great. Yeah, man. It looks like a lot of fun. Well, that's not the best one, but no, that's great. Before we go into our <laughs> aggregates, no, that is... you could you could have listened to the disclaimer and stop acting like a snooty asshole like the fucking idiots in the comment section, please. <laughs> or you could just read the comic books I'm... and be good at watching movies, bruh. This is the this is what's wrong with America. You know, we were what's right. We were the good parts of America a couple weeks ago, and now we're back to being what's wrong with America. Oh God! I I I, I know the comment section is going to rip me apart. I know it's going to happen. I'm, I'm ready for it. Dion's already ripped you apart. What more could they do? <laughs> Don't say that. Don't fucking say that. He's not even a real well, Samoan. <laughs> like they know that. They can't even figure out who I am. That's on true. Show. That's one true. Guy's like, sure, they think. Who are white. you? <laughs> yeah, we're just a bunch of angry white kids. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. We, the whitest yeah, kids you don't know. <laughs> that's right. We're we're, we're, we're a bunch. Of, yeah, that's right. We're a bunch of angry white kids. That's exactly what we are. If I had a nickel for every time somebody called us a bunch of angry white guys, I'd have a shitload of nickels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So while we were doing all that, I was able to tabulate. And folks, here's how I made the tabulations. I took everybody's rank. So whatever number they were. So for example, let's say Spider Man shit coming. It was. If it got it, if it was placed last, I put an 18 there, and I added everybody's up, divided it by four, and it gave me an average number. Spoiler alert: Spider-Man: Homecoming is 18th. It had an aggregate score of. It's the only one I'm going to read. Uh, where'd it go? It is 17.5. So <laughs> we really did not like that movie to where we pretty much placed it 18th. So that's 18. 17 is Iron Man 2, and this is the definitive list of world-class bullshitters in our view of MCU. Gotcha. Six, 16 is Iron Man 3. 15 is Thor The Dark World. 14, Thor Ragnarok. 13, Black Panther. Please slay us. Call Jesse Jackson. We're racist. <laughs> 12, The Incredible Hulk. 11, The Avengers Age of Ultron. 10, Thor. 9, Doctor Strange. 8, Captain America, the first Avenger, lover of his boyfriend. 7, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. 6, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. 5, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Four, Ant-Man. Three, Iron Man. Two, The Avengers. And number one, best MCU movie, probably until next week, Captain America, Civil War. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. I feel like I personally made Guardians of the Galaxy so low on the list, and I feel powerful and good. <laughs> uh, yes, because Guardians, the first Guardians, it was me at four, 
Dion at seven. Nick, well, no, because Nick had it eleventh, and you had it twelfth. Oh, okay. The only person that really skewed any major results on anything was me with Civil War because it was one one two seven. Oh, okay. But other than that, pff, there's a lot of consistency, at least for three of the four numbers that are in there. Because it was kind of <laughs> hard because I'm like, try, I'm like, okay, so there's three, three point two five, four point two five, four five, five point two. So there was a lot of really close numbers, and there was not a whole lot of separate. They were clumped. So the top ones were clumped, the middle and the bottom ones, like Spider-Man Homecoming, which was the easiest one to figure out. I wonder why. Yeah, really. It's awful. <clears throat> well, yeah, like you said, though, that is the definitive list of world-class bullshitters. So, listeners, down in the comments section, you can tell us your thoughts on this episode. Well, the episode's not over. You can tell us your thoughts on this list. And bitches. And you can give us yours. Yeah, you can bitch us. I don't care. I'll put it like this. If, if we could put every Marvel movie... Ever? Spider-Man 2 would have been it, yeah. probably my second favorite. Yeah, that would have skewed this list for me yeah. massively. So some of the X-Men films. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, X, the X-Men would have definitely skewed for me as well. Definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah, Ant-Man would not have been my favorite movie. It would have probably been like third. Mm-hmm. Well, what would have been your favorite if you could include every Marvel movie? Probably ever? the first two Spider-Man. It'd probably be two. Okay. It'd probably be Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 1. Dude, dude, Blade, yeah, Blade, Blade 1 would be up there real high for me. Oh, <laughs> shit. Number one in the yeah, movie. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Definitely. on a side note, Spider Man Three would come in ahead of uh, both Amazing's and Homecoming, and I hate yeah. that movie. And Fantastic Four, the Silver Surfer. Oh my god, yeah, that Four. would be down at the bottom too. <laughs> I don't know where Blade would be for me. I'm actually taking that as a serious question because I like Blade, but the Blade trilogy movies would all be pretty low on the list for me. Sorry, Dion. And that that uh, Blade Trinity, I get, but Blade. Oh one, yeah. Two? I don't like Blade 2. I love, I love the oh first Oh my god, one. I love Blade 2. Blade, Blade 2 is so better than the first one. Fucking it Novak is, is arguably the best villain in all of comic books, I'd say. Oh my I don't god. like the setting, and I don't like Norman Reedus. Oh no, yeah, I don't like him either. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I think, though, there's one he was, thing we could he was, all agree on. He was on. born to look like that, I swear to god. Like, when he came out of the womb, he looked just like that. Because that's the only I've ever Old. seen him. And what we all could agree on is the number one movie, if we took them all into account, would be Fan Four Stick. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, number one at the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way Homecoming could get out of the fucking basement is if we put that in there. Oh, so, yeah. Fan Four Stick has you know knocked it off its pedestal of being the shittiest movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it would it, it, it would be Blade and probably Logan would be up there for me too because I fucking loved Logan. Yeah, Logan, Logan and Deadpool. Oh God, yes. Oh, oh yeah, God. Right. yeah, Deadpool would probably be number. I, mean, one. I still have Civil War as the best one. I think thinking about it, but still, fucking Blade, Logan, and Deadpool. Pro- <sighs> they're, they're, they're still not better than Avengers because Avengers is still the the event for me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. I, I agree. I, 100%. Of, of, of the MCU, those are probably the only two in the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Avengers, yeah, Avengers is is it for me as well? Because yeah, that 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 is an event, and that's something we will probably not see again for either never again or for a very long time. X two would be up there for me pretty highly. X two really was like fantastic. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I even like Days of Future Past quite a bit. That was a it's lot of fun, great. man. It's really good. Yeah, that was I, a lot of fun. I prefer Days of Future Ass. All right, loudy. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we were to even make this a, a more skewed list and put every comic book movie ever, oh my god, Batman eighty nine, number one with a bullet. That oh, was shit, that's no. hard. Um, that's so hard, man. Uh, it pu- might be. Punisher, Punisher. Which one? Um, uh, Thomas Jane. Thomas, yeah, Thomas Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I fucking mm-hmm. love, dude. Good. I, that would be a top five for god, me, dude. This no would be so what. difficult, so fucking difficult, that's crazy. Coming yeah. next week, our DCEU rankings. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, we're going to bypass Avengers Infinity War just to talk about the DCEU. <laughs> it goes shitty, 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 and we, shitty. And, hey, Justice League didn't suck that much. And we lose all of our fans immediately. It's um, pretty much Wonder Woman, Justice League, and everything else until Suicide Squad. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go Justice League's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Wonder yeah, Woman. I was going to say, I'd put that ahead of Wonder Woman, and then it would be Man of Steel. Yeah. Yes, Suicide Squad. And then I'm going to... Yeah. It. Yeah, that that'd be my list exactly. There you go, folks. You got a two for this. <laughs> Our oh definitive DCU list. Yeah. So let's. Uh, you know what? Our fans got in on this earlier in the week. 
So real quick though, from our good the preceding what? the preceding was merely opinions expressed by people. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, so don't be one. Thank you. Boom. Thank you, Kendo. Um, okay, this comes from our good friend Alexander Kalyanak. So he says, I'm just checking to see if the email works. If it does, I love your guys' show. I can't wait for your MCU episode. Well, there it is. you don't have to wait because you're on it now. Yeah. So, by the way, his top five MCU, MCU movies are, and this is go, this goes from worst to best, but none of these are shitty, Iron Man, Guardians 2, Avengers, Civil War, and The Winter Soldier. Yeah. And, he gave, and he gave reasons. Iron Man started it all and was great. Guardians 2 had some really great emotional moments for pretty much everyone. Avengers is one of the only movies I can watch over and over again and never get bored. Civil War was the most gut-wrenching experience in any superhero movie I've seen in a while. And finally, Winter Soldier is, in my opinion, objectively the best Marvel movie and the best portrayal of Captain America. My favorite part of the movie is his speech to all his S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Yeah. I, I, I love that speech. I'm trying to think of my favorite part of Civil War, or Winter Soldier. When he talks about how much he loves his boyfriend. <laughs> Dude, when he when that movie starts though and he fights that um, George St. Pierre guy. Yeah. That is that is an awesome fucking fight. Well, the, the, the best thing too is when he goes, I thought I thought you were more than uh, what he said, what is George St. Pierre? I thought you were more than just the shield and fucking he, he goads Captain America into a fist fight, which is like no one that you don't see that in other movies, which is so fucking so goddamn cool. Even then, when he and then when he fights, um, when he fights Rumlo and the other agents in the elevator, I fucking love that fight scene. I like how Captain America operates in a gray area in a, in a, in a way. I'm not saying because I mean, he still stands for truth and yeah. justice more so than Superman, and definitely the American way. But I do like how his suits more muted. The the murkier the jobs he does are. Like I, I like that there was that little. You know, visual aspect that a lot of people didn't think about. You know, in uh, in uh, in this movie, he's is, is he? I know in this movie, he's called what Captain with Captain Nomad or Captain Without a Country or something. No, he's still Captain America. Well, he just keep on. He's still. Yeah. Okay. But in the comic books, he becomes Nomad. So you are correct. Okay. Yeah, because like Captain America Nomad. Yeah, because I, I I think I watched some guy trying to make his his uh, his co- his costume, and he kept calling him Captain Nomad or Captain Without a Country, and I I, I just. Do you mean cosplay? Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched him do that. I. I I wanted to talk about him on one of my solitaire or single videos because I just really love cosplay Chris's videos. Yeah, dude, he does a good job. I love I like I, I will I will like in the background watch him like repaint a figure and make it even better. And I'm like, this is amazing. Did you watch the Thanos? Yeah, one? I love dude. I love that. I, I love his stuff. I don't know why. It's just like he does a really good job of presenting all of his stuff. It's amazing. I love how every foreign person though can't say Thanos. They say Thanos, <laughs> and I'm just like, look at his name's Thanos. It's he was created in America. That's how it's fucking pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! There's no precedent for calling him something else. It's Thanos, not Thanos. It's not Xanatos from fucking Gargoyles. It's Thanos. <laughs> By the way, Olek goes to say thanks for all the great entertainment and keep up the great work. And it was sent from his iPhone, so thank you, Olek. We really appreciate you uh, listening to the show as often as you do. I've, this isn't the first time I've read an email from that guy. Yeah, man. Appreciate, thanks, uh... We appreciate you more if you're an Android user. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a, uh, one of our longest listeners, Jason White, sent another email. He goes, listening to the High Council, I thought Ethan was going to die of laughter. By the way, folks, if you don't know what the High Council is, that is a secondary show, a secondary channel I appear on, on now going to be Tuesday Nights Live on its own YouTube channel. So I will post the link in the description of this video. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, because in the first day, it got like 1,300 subscribers. Basically, it's me. Jeff of World Class Bullshitters, for those who don't know who I am that listen to this show, as well as Ethan Van Skyver, who's a legitimate DC Comics superstar artist. Basically, he has the job I wanted up until this channel started to take off, and now I don't want to draw anymore. I'd rather be a World Class Bullshitter. But it's him, me, you know, us, and uh, usually Diversity in Comics, that, which is, a, you know, a lightning rod for controversy. And then, you know, sometimes we have guests, and this week we had a guy named Nurkishan. And it was incredible, and a guy named Cecil was on there too, and it got really weird and bizarre. And I, uh, oh my god! Iraq meets plane crash meets fucking house fire, dude. Dude, I've never laughed so much in my life. Holy shit! Like when 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 Ian had to like describe what yiffing was, I was like, "What the fuck yeah. are you doing right now?" Yeah, it's like I told you guys. That's the high council. I just threw my hands up in the moderating. I'm just like, yeah. I, you know, there's, there's this shit's coming through so fast right now. I, I'm not even gonna fucking bother. <laughs> Yeah, and and also everybody, there is a High Council Twitter, High Council sh- at High Council Show. Uh, hopefully, all the videos will get kicked out there first. 
Yeah, and by the way, folks, that video is called Prelude to High Council, so if you don't know what that is on the channel, give it a watch, because it starts out as a really good in-depth discussion on superhero films, and then it turns into a dumpster it fire. It does, but so. like the, the best, warmest dumpster fire you've ever been around. Oh, yeah, it's like one yeah. on like a winter's evening when you're homeless under the bridge, and you're like so thankful for that fire. That's that's the type of fire it was. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. It was a, definitely. It was a fun dumpster fire. Oh, yeah. Um, also, okay, so actually to his email, it says... Uh, he just enjoyed it. So here are his three MCU films, top three, and this is best to worst. Winter Soldier, Civil War, and then Iron Man. So both of our listeners that sent in their uh, lists have exceptional taste. So thank you guys for enjoying our show as well as enjoying the best of the MCU, in our opinion. Now, Dion, this is for you, and I'll, you know, I'll chime in at the end. Oh, shit. So for Dion, it's a fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> With Sigourney Weaver characters. Oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> told you this. I told you this would be difficult. Ellen Ripley, Dana Barrett from Ghostbusters, or Doctor Grace Augustine from Avatar. Ooh, I'm character. definitely killing Augustine from Avatar because even though you had the long curly hair, I just give a shit about what you got to say to me. Um, <laughs> fucking, I'm fucking Ellen Ripley all day. You know, those the, the panties, no bra, a little bit of bush. Oh, yeah. And then I'm marrying my girl from Ghostbusters because she cares. She's got a cute little kid. And I can look at Bill Murray and being like, you know what? For once in my life, I've beaten you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God my damn, God. That did not take him long at all. I love that. <laughs> that was way easier than I thought I was scared. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Like, he is a man of conviction. Gordy and Eva Mendez or Helen Mirren or, or fucking Byling. Like, I don't know what I'm a fucking do. You like Byling that much? Not, I, I like her a lot. Young Byling. Well, Young no, Byling. I'm, I'm just saying, if you remind me, I have her Playboy. Oh, in yes, Spain. Yes. I'll give it to you. It says Star Wars on the cover. I just got to find it. It's somewhere. Like, here's a story. When I went to Spain when I was 16, I bought a whole bunch of porn because they sold it on the streets. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I also bought Spider-Man comics because they sold those on the streets as well. So my bag was full. Of, I had bought a sword, Spider-Man comics, and porn. That's a good weekend. Basically, basically what, what, every, what every nerdy American guy goes to goes there for. Yeah. <sighs> Too bad nothing happened with the hot girl from Idaho. Anyway, <laughs> we have read all the emails. We have – there's really not much to cover else this week. Is there anything I'm missing? Oh, there is something I'm missing. So – I forgot the listener's name, and I apologize in advance, but someone sent me a personal message and asked me why I hate Michael B. Jordan, and I said, hey, I'll read it on the show, and I think that was before we went off to WrestleMania. So today I was trying to watch Creed, and I got sidetracked, so I turned it off, but it jogged my memory. So why do I hate Michael B. Jordan? Well, mainly because the movie Chronicle, I hate that movie, and I hated him in it. (laughs) He was kind of a dick. Okay, he was very much a dick, so when he died, I was happy. Secondly... He's in the fucking Fantastic Four. The Human Torch is not a black dude. And you know what? Anytime someone brought it to his attention, he gave the shittiest fucking answer. So fuck you. That's why I dislike you on a personal level. And you're okay in my book now because you were good in Black Panther and you're dead. So that's <laughs> And you know what? I'm sure Creed was uh, you know, panning out to be a really good movie. But I was thinking to myself... If I'm going to watch this, I'm going to give it my full attention. Because I was working on a box of Super Mario Brothers cereal at, you know, this morning. And I had that on. And then once that cereal was empty, I knew I had work to do for the channel. So I thought, eh, i got to get this channel work done. Creed could come another day. So Nick gave me a Blu-ray rip. It's on Hulu. I will watch it another date. But there you go. Those are my thoughts. That's why I don't like Michael B. Jordan. Because he's kind of an asshole in real life. And not like a charming one. He's just kind of like, oh, you know. Don't shit on me. He's a step above. He's a step above John Boyega, though. So, yeah, yeah. Boyega. Yeah, no Boyega. Did you see Pacific Rim? Yeah, yeah, I saw. I how, yeah, how yeah. Me, it? me, and me. I, I think, I think me and Dion saw part two. Yep. Um. Once again, it suff- it suffers from you know like not enough robot monster action, which like I could give two fucks about the people. Like, just give me robot monster action, and I'm fine. Exactly. Um. It was a lot of it was you know it was a lot of fun. The there was a twist that was really weird and like was really creepy also, but was really awesome as well. Like it was fucking crazy, but it was you know it was really good. And um, it seems like they're planning a third one, which I kind of hope happens now because like these first two have been real crazy. Like one was okay, two was I think a little bit better than it. Uh, three, I think they go balls out. I'll I'll be fine with that. So. I won't watch it because I haven't seen. I, you know what? 
Pacific Rim, I saw it on cable, and it was so boring, so I tried Oh, that's it. fine, man. Um, God, what is it? I watched um, Ready Player One, like, Sunday. I fucking love that movie. That's, that was Holy great. shit. That might be my favorite movie I've seen in theaters this year. So far, so far so it is. Far, as a, it's a good way to start the year, goddamn. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I realized I've seen three movies in theaters this year. Jumanji, Black Panther, and Ready Player One. Black Panther's automatically third because <laughs> Jumanji was really... Jumanji was so good because I didn't expect yeah. it to be good. Yeah, like, if, if, if you can make me care for the characters very quickly, like, you you win. And then Jumanji did that, even though, like, they were avatars and they were still playing, like, you know, their 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 characters. Like, they did that really well. And then Ready Player One did it extremely well. Even though they, they, they described everything very quickly, you got it. You understood it. And you cared for the characters, like, you know, immediately. And it was it was so well done. So Plus, well it done. A, a perfect little mention of Robin Williams. Like, that was the best way to do it. Like, hey, this is Alan Pierce's house. I'm just living in it. And I'm like, that was the best way. Oh, my God. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was perfect. It was an homage, and it you know, brought, brought a little tear to my eye. I was like, God damn it, you, you guys did it good. All right. We'll see. No, I, I, I loved that part, too. And bringing up Ready Player One, it made me go back and rethink Steven Spielberg. I'm like, that dude still got it for, what is he, 70-something? Yeah. Years? Like, he's got it more than every young director nowadays. Like, he's the one guy that could truly save Star Wars because he's got big enough pull to do whatever the fuck he wants, and he gets it. So, you know, we'll talk about Star Wars for a brief moment. If Kathleen Kennedy dies in a fire or a car wreck or she gets drowned by her husband who doesn't love her anymore, Damn. I hope Steven Spielberg somehow has the pull to, you know, like, weasel his way in there and be like, look, this is what we're doing. And then he fixes the franchise. He if he no, 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 if, if he if he fixes the franchise and he comes in and does that, I will be like, all right, I'm Star Wars fan again. But until that day, <laughs> yeah, I lied to that guy at GameStop and told him I don't like Star Wars mainly because I didn't want to pre-order Battlefront Two, but also partially because it's a, it's a true statement. I just I'm done. I'm hurt by yeah. it. Well, and also fuck Battlefront Two. From what I hear, they they uh, they brought put back the, the goddamn. Yeah, yep. they did. They brought back the microtransactions. So fuck them. Well, another reason for me not to buy the game. Yeah, like I like I still want like I look at the gameplay sometimes. It's like, God damn it, it looks cool. It's like, no, resist, fuck them. I'm glad you didn't fall into the obey category. Yeah, it's like just just don't do it. Like I'm, you know, I downloaded Mad Max recently on PS4 and I'm fucking playing the shit out of that. I love that game now. Yeah, as you should. It's a great game. It it, um, it did did it come did it come out around the time of the movie or afterwards? No, it came out um, in August the year the movie came out. I think. It is such a fleshed out game. I mean, some of the, some of the stuff is a little wonky, but it's still like really fucking good. Oh, the driving mechanics are fantastic. It might have so far one of the best open worlds on PS4. Oh my god, it dude! Looks, yeah, looks. It, I love how it looks. I mean, then it too is just it's just like dark as shit. Like you can find an old artifacts from before the end of the world, and it's like family photos and shit. It's great. Oh yeah, dude! It's it's so much fun. So much fun. Um, I'll be playing that for a while. I'll go dig out my PS4 from the back room and hook it up to another TV to download it. It's, it's worth it, man. It's, it's free, and I think I think they got a couple add-ons you got to pay for. But even if, if even if they're not too much, I, I might I might get those too. So I did it with Just Cause Three. So. Oh, it's still it's still a fucking wonderful game. I still play the shit out of that. Like that mm-hmm. is one of the best things I ever downloaded. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go make sure you didn't beat some of my scores. Oh fuck you! you. I will spend I will spend a week beating you. Whatever. I'll spend two weeks beating you then. (laughs) And while you're busy doing that two weeks of shit, I'll be doing channel stuff. So and I and I might be on the podcast. I don't know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you ahead of time. Um, <laughs> like, Why did Nick leave the show? Well, Jeff beat his beat his score in a video game, (laughs) and Nick took it personally. And in Samoa, when you're beaten in a video game, once your name's taken off that high score spot, you just walk hey, out into the ocean and you're never seen. Hey, again. in Samoa, we have we have a saying: if you're beaten in a video game, you're beaten for real. Okay. So. <laughs> you need to stop watching a Nightmare on Elm Street, dude. <laughs> when you die in the dream world, you die in the real world. No, no. Robert Ingham, I love you. <laughs> you the real MVP, dog. <laughs> anyway, folks. We're going to close out this MCU episode. So before we do our outro, think about what's going to come next week with Avengers Infinity War. Are you excited? What are your thoughts? Are you do you can you believe we live in a world where Ant-Man's had a movie and it was fantastic? I mean, it used to be like, "Oh, only Batman and Superman could make good movies." And now 
Thor and all these other characters that you'd think were just, you know, only uh, feasible on uh, paper because they were so cheesy work. So we're living in the golden age of superhero movies. You know, we're at the end of it. They're going to milk that shit with Captain Marvel. It's going to suck. And no one's going to care anymore. But let's enjoy it for at least one more week. So do you guys have any major predictions you'd like to throw out there before we close this episode out? Cap dies. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think the end. Of, it's going to end with Cap getting his shield back, and Iron Man's going to die at the end of the Infinity War. Uh, oh, no, no, not, I'm taking back not Iron Man, Black Widow. That's who's going to die. Oh man, she was so hot. Uh, I, my prediction is somebody's going to die. Thor dies. <laughs> the dog dies. America no, not the dog. Oh God, dude! If if the dog dies, there's going to be some weird fucking uproar, and they're going to like have petitions against the movie. It's like, a dog dies. We can't show this movie in theaters because it's it, it, offensive against animals. Like, oh, go fuck yourselves. Thanos so, is going to kill Get Out. Avengers. <laughs> I'm cool with that. <laughs> Steal one of his fucking I kinda rhinos. See, I, I kind of want to see Black Panther's sister die because I hated her. <laughs> yeah. Thanos comes walking up. She goes, what are those? And he stomps on her fucking head. They're in my infinity gem. And he just crushes her head like a fucking Oh, creep. my God. Awesome. <laughs> Like, uh, what was it, Friday the 13th Part 7, yep. where Jason juices that dude's face? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I hope, against all hope, that Spider-Man doesn't die, because they'll try to bring in this Miles Morales bullshit. And I, 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 not I gonna, they're not going to kill Tom Holland. Well, work. no, like, I, I, I was watching, what was it, I, I was watching, watching where, 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 uh, Ready Player One, and they had a, a preview for, like, a CG or cartoon Spider-Man Miles Morales movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, what the, the multiverse? fuck is this? Well, that's a uh, an early. Near, normally, the stuff they adapt for Spider-Man movies, they base it off you know tried and true stuff. But now they're trying to adapt weird shit that really isn't part of the uh, popular culture. So we'll see if it works or not. I'll skip it. Yeah, it it just yeah. Once again, like I don't I don't care. So well, that's not really Spider-Man. So they're not getting my money. Right on. And I just for the record, I did not pay to see the Amazing Spider-Man two in theaters. So, um. They didn't get my money for that one either. Oh. So my statement's true. All right. Well, I've been your host, Jeff Hicks. I'm the man, the plan, the original tan, and God damn it, I love me some beef jerky. Dion Green. I'm your uh, lessening Samoan saying, buy Frank and Thug, God damn it. Dion did. Kendo has. Jeff's going to, hopefully. Yeah. I, I just honestly keep forgetting. <laughs> I haven't even watched the free copy to review yet, so oh, God. I'm the bad guy. I guess Kendo's no, dead. No, I'm here. I'm Kendo. Remember, folks, stay safe out there. Wear gloves when you're fisting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the party doesn't stop. Over on Patreon, World Class Bullshitters After Hours is uh, going to be talking about the MCU on TV. But until then, Godspeed, Spider-Man. Spider-Man.